All right, so now we're going to learn how to use something practical with caustics, and that is glassware and stuff like that, like if you're doing a promo for a drink or something like that. So we are going to actually do a little bit of modeling and stuff. We're not going to go into it real into detail, but it was pretty satisfying to create this glass, um, at least tweak it and make a variant of it. Uh, but we'll see uh, pretty much... We're just pretty much cover the simple setup and then how to get the caustics and stuff on this glass, which we already really know how to do. We're just going to double check, okay? So, new scene. So, the new scene, let's delete our sphere out of there. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in glass. And we're not just going to use the glass that's available. We could, but the glasses that are available are pretty uh, simple. So, we're not going to get a lot of cool caustics from those. Uh, the beer mugs might have some good caustics in them because they're a little more detailed uh but some of the some like this one is really cool but i have to have max on one in order to use that and uh, we don't have that so i want to make sure that everybody has access to this stuff so we're not going to use that but you can see like this is kind of the style of glass i was for kind of going for i love the like the crosshatch diamond on it i think that looks really cool but we're gonna, just going to go ahead and grab a normal glass that is available to us and we are going to just tweak it this one right here, glass 14. It's not a redshift glass, it's just regular C4D glass. So we're gonna grab this. We're just gonna go ahead and select our placement tool. That way when we drag and drop it, we can automatically just place it right here on the ground. And you can see it's very tiny because our scene is very big. That is totally fine. All right, so see, it's a very simple glass. It'd be very easy to make this and model this. Uh, we don't cover glasses in the modeling week, but let me know if that's something you want to cover. Um, it's a very simple thing. There's a lot of tutorials and a lot of glasses available out there, but a lot of the glasses that are really cool looking aren't quite available. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and hit C on this to make it editable. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click and hold this option here and hold Alt and let go on Remesh. And we're going to remesh it uh, with maybe 50% of the mesh density. So that's going to calculate that out. And it's going to be less smooth, but we're going to smooth it back out afterwards. We just want our geometry to be a little less so we can work with it. So we're going to go ahead and hit C and make that editable. And that's going to put it in a null that's useless. So we're going to drag and drop that out of there and go into our glass here. Now we're going to go into the edge selection tool. And what we want to do is we're going to go over here and we choose loop selection or ring selection. And we're going to choose ring selection. So what that's going to do is allow us to pick rings like this. So we can just, we're going to click here in the lower part of our glass. Let's go ahead and change our display so we can only see uh, sort of like that. And we're actually going to go ahead and throw our other material on here instead of the glass so we can't see through it. So it's really annoying when you're trying to select things and you can see through and it's hard to tell what's the foreground and what's the background. So if it's doing that, that's because you have a transparent material on there. So make sure you put a solid material on there so it actually like fills in. So we're going to click right here and select this ring about, you know, a quarter of the way up the glass and then hold shift and just kind of work our way down. Shift, click, shift, click, shift, click down to about here and maybe all the way down to the bottom. And what I want to do is right click and choose bevel. And then we're going to click and just kind of pull that out a little bit. So click and hold and that's just going to pull those out and make a little weird little indent there. It's not going to look right at first, but with that selected and we pull that out just a tiny bit. We're going to hold control and click the polygon mode and that's going to select everything that's attached to those lines so this is the faces of what we just created we're going to click we want to make sure that you see this little icon next to the mouse if you put it over here it switches to extrude and we don't want that you see how the icon changes we want this icon that has a little looks like a box like a little bevel okay we're going to click and hold and pull to the right and we're going to pull this out a little bit more than we think we need to just like that so there we go. That's a little crisscross. It's not perfect, but uh, I don't hate it. So now I've added some rivets to our glass. And here's the cool part, the fun part that we're going to do here. So we're going to go back to our mode here. And we're going to go to this glass. And we're going to hold shift and select a twist and put it on here. And then we're going to go ahead and click fit to parent. And that's going to make this twist modifier fit our glass. And then we can just start twisting it. And you see how we're creating that nice twist in a cool glass. So there we go. That looks pretty fun. Maybe a little too dramatic, more like that. Pretty good. So with this glass selected, we're going to right click 
and say connect objects and delete, which is going to lock that in. So now we're going to click and hold this, hold alt and add it into a subdivision surface, which is going to smooth that back out for us a little bit. And there we go. And now if we don't like the way this is like twisting and stuff, all we need to do is click and hold and throw this back into a remesher. And so that's going to calculate that up. See it down here in the bottom left, it's working on it. And it's going to rebuild that back for us with a little, little cleaner of a view there. Perfect. So now with all of this, we can right click and say connect objects and delete. So now we have a nice locked in mesh that we can still come in here and tweak and stuff if we want to with more deformers and things like that. If we wanted to twist it more, we could and stuff like that. One thing that might be a nice one to do would maybe be a taper. So we're going to hold shift and put a taper on this and we say fit to parent and we're going to adjust that and we could, you know, taper it up so it's a little wider at the top. But I think it should taper down at the bottom versus being at the top like that. So what I'm going to do is hit Y negative and then hit fit to parent again to reset that. And now I can taper in the base if I want, but I don't love it. That's kind of a cool glass though. That's not bad. And we can also just, you know, grab our mesh, hit T and just kind of squat it down if we want to. That's kind of a cool little cup. Yeah. And so just kind of have fun with it. And we'll put that back on the ground. If you ever want to look into the ground, you just go into your middle mouse view and just zoom in here and just kind of want to line that right on the ground. Pretty good. Cool. You can turn on snapping and stuff, but normally you can get it pretty close enough. That it doesn't really matter. Awesome. We'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So now with this on and this tapered, we're going to go ahead and right click again, object and delete. And the reason we're doing object and delete uh, is basically because we're, we're reckless and we, we don't care that. Um, so basically, if I right click and just say connect objects, it's going to make a copy of it. So I still have a version that I could take the taper off and stuff like that, which is probably the smart thing to do. But like I was saying, um, we're just being reckless. You just turn this one off, hold Alt, click, click, click while holding Alt. All right, so we'll call this Whiskey Glass. Cool. So now create a new material. Uh, we don't even have to. If you really want, you can just use a Redshift uh, Glass material. We can just swap to materials here while this is types in glass. And we can have some frosted glass, simple glass. Here's a Redshift Clear Glass. Redshift glass distorted, redshift glass imperfect. Let's try that one. Oh, we don't have the access to that one. Well, let's just make our own real quick. Go ahead and throw this material on our whiskey glass. Double click that, open this up, and let's go ahead and change this to just like a slight, 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 slight green and bring that weight down just a bit. And we're gonna take this transmission weight all the way up to 0.9. That we get a little tiny bit of that color coming through. And we're also going to just add the tiniest bit of green tint to this. Well, no, we're not. And then we're going to add just a little bit of that greenish tint to this um, depth and make it really big. So like that, like a hundred for the depth. And we'll take a look at that real quick. We just want like a little hint of that glass color coming through. Let's try a little bit more, maybe just tin. I'm just going to lower that down until we get a little bit of that green tint. See how we've gotten a little bit of that natural looking glass green tint coming into it now. If we lower this down really low, you know, we're going to get a lot more of it, which you can obviously make some pretty looking glasses and stuff that kind of look like kind of retro, you know, kind of neat. So I think, uh, but I think having it be like a tiny bit green is kind of this nice, cool, natural glass color like that. I think that looks good. Quite happy with the way this glass is turning out. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool at the same time. And then what we're going to do is open up the asset browser and we're going to, you didn't know you're going to learn all this during lighting week, did you? Uh, and we're going to go ahead and go to all and we're going to type in imperfection. And we're going to grab uh, one of these that has like fingerprints on it, glass imperfection. That sounds like what we want. I'm just going to click and drag that into our node editor here. And we're just going to plug that into the bump map here. And obviously it's going to make it just way too strong. Let's go ahead and solo this so we can see this on our object. And it's okay. It's a little intense. So what we're going to do is plug it into a ramp first. Alt input and then into here. And we're using this ramp to 
um, adjust this these values. So we're going to take this white and we're going to lower it down to be more of a gray, which is going to make it less intense, right? So when it goes into the bump, it's going to be given a value of like 0.4 versus a value of 1. So we can solo this so we can see kind of the effects of that. So we just want a tiny bit and maybe we pull this down a bit more to get a little bit more in there. But I think you can really adjust how much filth and stuff is on your scene. And then we're going to grab our bump and we're going to change it from 1 to like 0.1. So just a tiny, tiny amount. And we're also going to grab this and throw it on. So grab this null, this little notch and attach it to the reflection roughness as well. We just want a tiny bit there. So it's gotten a little too rough. And again, I think we just need to take this and maybe slide it back up, which is just going to give us more of that black value because we really do want it to be uh, mostly see-through and just kind of have these little tiny imperfections. So if you look at this again, you'll see we just have these little tiny things there. We might could just make these smaller. And the way to do that would be to grab this texture and instead of, you would think you do a smaller number for the scale. And again, we talk about all this material this week. Uh, but we're going to increase the scale of that, which is basically telling it to tile. So maybe we do like three. And so now we have more of these like tiny little flakes and stuff on here versus, we can slide this up a tiny bit more. We just want just a teeny bit of this stuff on here. And it's just going to make that world of difference when we're looking at this. That's going to make it perfectly not perfect. It still looks a little too rough. Let's take it out of the roughness here. Yeah, I think that's good. I think just having that bump will be enough for us. Yeah. Yep. Looking good. I like it. There's little, like little tiny little things. We're going to lower this down even more. 0.1. Maybe we just, it's tough, 0 0.02. Like we just want it the teeniest bit there. It just needs to be like a layer of finger oil, you know, on the glass. And we're spending too much time on this, of course, because that's just what we do. But I think you're, you're learning a little bit of the process here. Yeah, we'll do that. It's like so subtle that the denoiser is denoising it out. But we'll see when we throw it on our other point. Maybe 0 0.45, 0 0.045. When we throw in our liquid, it should be okay. All right. We'll settle with that. That I think that's going to look good. It's a nice, cool looking glass though. Let's go ahead and go in here and take the roughness down to like 0 0.05. And turn the IOR up to 0 0.0, or sorry, 1.6. Just to make it a little thicker glass. Yeah. So obviously that made our bump pop out a little bit more having that reflection down so we're going to take it again and tweak it back down 0 0.015 we want it to be so subtle that we don't even see it cool nice you could probably just skip that step but i don't know sometimes i think those little tiny things do help uh cool but we've got this cool looking glass so now let's go ahead and add some liquid into this and so what we're going to do is just create a cylinder, most likely. Yeah. Cylinder. And we're going to close this. And we're going to make sure our cylinder is really small. It's probably like um, 3 centimeters by, I don't know, 4 centimeters. And we're going to choose the uh, this place tool. And we're just going to plop it in right here. And we're actually going to go up and plop it into our cup by clicking into the base of our cup here. Which is perfect. So now we can, you know, kind of see that we can rest it inside of our cup here. But we're going to need to obviously tweak the shape of this because right now it looks like a candle sitting in there. So how do we tweak this? Again, a lot of modeling stuff we're going to go over quickly. But, I mean, it's pretty cool looking. Okay, so let's go ahead and just increase the height segments. Sorry, not the height, the height segments. Because we're going to need it to be smooth when we bulge it out. And we also want to go ahead and go to the caps and turn on fillet, which is just going to give us these nice round corners. But that's way too big. So we're going to go with like 0.25. And that's going to round that off for us at the bottom and at the top a bit. Now with this selected, we can just click and hold and choose bulge. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a child. And now with this selected, we choose fit to parent. And now we can just scale this up. You can see how we can kind of fit that glass a bit more like that. 
And so, you know, obviously that looks good around the middle, but our liquid is like curving back in and that's no good. Now it really looks like a candle. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to go in here and make this editable by hitting C. And that's still, that bulge effect is still going to be separate from that. But we're going to be able to come in here and grab the top of this by going to our selection tool. And then our little um, click to select. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the roof just like that. Click and hold. Hit UI, UI to grab all those edges up to the side. And then we're going to hit T. And just scale this out wider. But we're not getting enough of it to go. So what we actually want to do is we're going to go ahead and have these selected. But we want to choose our selection tool while we have these selected. And then over here it creates a tab called soft selection. And we want to enable that. And now you can see it's going to highlight everything in our scene. So the radius of the selection needs to be like one centimeter, maybe even two. So we're going to actually select almost halfway down our glass and scale that up just to the edge of our cup here. And that's going to make it more of a, a soft edge. And then when we click out of this, we should go back and see our bulge is there, which is perfect. We want to go ahead and increase the radius of this all the way down to pretty much like that. And we'll say like 65% strength. So now you see us like kind of fading down. It's kind of scaling everything together as one unit, which is perfect. And so now that we have scaled that up, we can then look at this with the bulge and see that our bulge is too big now. And we can just scale that back down. And there we go. Now we're fitting right in our cup really nicely, looking really, really good. And the, you know, the fillet on this might be a little much. So again, go back to the selection tool, select, oops, face tool, select our top and turn off soft selection by clicking this and then and disabling it. And then make sure we're just on this and we're just going to scale it up just a bit and make sure we get you why we want that section too. And just pull that out. Just hit T to go back to the scaling tool and pull that out a little bit just so we can kind of cap that a tiny bit. And now with this, we can go ahead and click and hold alt and put that in a subdivision surface just so it's nice and smooth. Now that has kind of shrunk it back in. So we actually might hit T and just scale it all back up a bit so it fits in there nicely. I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. Um, we want to make sure that we do have it in the center of our glass. So we're going to go to our top view and it looks pretty good. That's moving the glass. Yeah, it looks like it was, yeah. Looks like it's a little big. There we go, like that. I see, I think it's, we need to just, there we go, put it more in the center. Oops, T, and scale it up. Again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but if you do want it to be absolutely perfect, um, you actually could just copy and paste the coordinates from that. But I think this is looking pretty good. Nice, all right, so now we've got a glass, we've got milk in there right now uh, what we want to do is go ahead and with this selected we can hit, again right click connect objects and delete and we'll call this uh, liquid and then we're going to create a new material throw that on here inside this material we're going to make it kind of this reddish color it doesn't really matter for this because we're not really going to see it uh, but we do want to give it a roughness of like point point three and an ior up to like 2.2 and the reason we're doing that is you know you don't really stare through um bourbon and see through the other side cleanly i kind of would flip the image a little bit so now the main thing is this transmission we turn that up which makes it you know clear and we're going to go ahead and turn this to red which is fine uh actually we're going to make it a little more orange yeah and then we're going to go to the scatter color and make that one a light red and really start messing with the depth of that. And now you can see as we turn that depth up, we kind of get this nice whiskey vibe. Right? Kind of looks like sweet tea a little bit more than whiskey right now. So we can just kind of adjust the colors a bit more. Maybe this is too pink. I mean, to make it more orange. 
and this is too orange and needs to be more yellow. Again, it would be helpful to look at a reference image, but you know, what, who are we to, to say? And we are going to up the roughness of this just a tiny bit on the inside, just like point, point 0.1, because I think it just kind of gives it this kind of like viscosity to it that liquor kind of has just a tiny bit more than water. Like it's a little bit thicker, but it doesn't quite look like honey. And we're going to mess with the scatter anisotropy, which is going to shift the way the light is working and the scatter color is working in there. But I don't think we need to. I think we can leave that how it is. Very nice. Cool. So now we have a nice glass of whiskey in it. And if we want to put an ice cube in there, let's go ahead and create that really quick because it's easy to create. And we're 23 minutes in and we haven't talked about caustics at all, but that's okay. I think this is a fun project. I'm pretty happy with the way this one's coming out because this is a very, very practical one. So we're going to say 222 two, two for squares. And we're going to go to our object mode and place tool, plop it in right here on top. Here we go. Perfect. And we're done. Uh, no, we're going to go ahead and add like 20 segments to this all the way around. And then we're going to click and hold this and choose hold alt. Uh, no, sorry, hold shift and let go on displacer. And it's going to put that inside. Again, go to the shading tab, choose noise. Perfect. And we're just going to scale that noise down to like 0 0.2, maybe even 0 0.3. That looks good, except it's just like crushing it. And the reason it's doing that is because we actually need to just scale down our noise and scale this down until, oh, you see, we're actually getting some nice wibbly wobblies, okay, which is what we want. So now we're going to go back down to this and choose like 0.15. So it's just subtle. And go ahead and go into our cube and turn on fillet and make that radius like 0.15. There we go. And I think that's still a little intense, so maybe like 0.08. Well, we can just say point, we can say 0.15 and then lower the strength of that down. Like that. I think that looks nice and good. Let's go ahead and take our glass that we created, copy it, and turn the base color off and the scattering off. And we'll just leave this up all the way. And we'll turn on some roughness inside of our glass or ice like that okay so this is going to be our ice material throw that on the cube and all i did there was i mean basically i just changed the transmission to be just full weight of one and then added some roughness and just took everything else off and adjusted the roughness value just a tiny bit so you can see you know we have a nice ice cube here now if you want to get fancy with it you can grab a sphere make it really small like 0.2 and again Easiest thing to do, use the place tool, click and drag, put that on there. Um, grab this material, throw it on that sphere as well. And just start and just drag that into our cube. And we'll just you know, make it a little bigger. Maybe move it towards the front a bit. We're not seeing it too much in there because our roughness is pretty high on this. So let's take our interior roughness and change it to like 0.25. So I want to be able to see through there and see those bubbles. There we go. And then control click and drag, hit T, scale it down and just kind of move these around in here. Control click and drag, scale it over, T. And we're just kind of looking to create like a little organic looking bubble combination inside of our ice. Just a nice little touch that you won't be able to see too much in there, but you can see it just a little bit. I think we just have too much blur on this again still. We're gonna go ahead and lower the IUR of this down to mm, 1.2. Is that better? I think it looked better before. Let's just do 1.4. 1.6 was fine. You know, it was fine. I think that looks good. Cool. So what we could do now is create a group by clicking this null object up here. Select all of these things that we just created with the ice cube. Throw that all inside this null. And now we can grab this whole object together and pull it down. And you may notice that uh, my axis is like way off the screen. So how do I fix that? My axis is actually like, I don't even know where it is. Um, my null is created way up high, I think. So everything got set to where the null is. So what I want to do with all of these objects is select all of them 
go to coordinates and just type in 000 and scale uh, is totally fine, but just 000. So they're all going to be reset to 000. Now when I move my null, I can click and drag and place it and everything is just in the right place. So we just reset everything to tick upon the coordinates of this rather than be offset. Because before they were all offset this amount and now they are all linked to this. So it's just like putting things into um, like parenting the position inside of After Effects or something like that. There we go. So now we can just take this and rotate it in there and just make it look kind of nice. And we can copy it if we want to put an extra one in there like that and rotate that one as well and maybe push it back in the glass a bit. There we go. Cool. Nice whiskey glass, right? Cool little scene. I'm pretty happy with that. I think our whiskey could be a little redder. We'll mess with that later, but we'll get the lighting and stuff set up. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about creating our little scene. So sometimes the easiest thing to do when building a set is just to kind of look at what assets you have uh, available to you. So maybe we type in like a table or actually we just start off with just saying redshift and we're like, okay, what kind of mood do we want? You know, do we want things like palm trees and stuff in there? Do we need a chair in the background of this shot or anything? Or are you just doing like a product shot? Like how would you set it up in the real world and then light it and film it? But also how also would you utilize the ability to do whatever you want with it? Because what we can do now is, you know, take all of these. This is our whiskey glass, liquid, and null. We can create a new null, and this is going to be all of it. And we're going to grab all of these things, not this one, and shove them all into this. And what we're going to do, again, is grab all of these and reset them back to zero, 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 zero. And now we're going to take our glass, place tool, and place it back. And everything should still be there in the same place except our ice has been moved. So we need to move our ice again. So grab our ice, pull it around, and our ice, move it back over there. Some reason they got shoved back. But yeah, so now we have uh, a group where we can control all this so we can do things like have it be floating or whatever in space. And you'd have a pretty cool like images that you couldn't capture otherwise. So you could like make some volumetric stuff like the liquids pouring up or floating out or something like that. You know, get ice cubes floating around with little droplets. So that's the kind of benefit of stuff like doing in 3D, right? Obviously, I think you know that though. But let's go ahead and grab um, just some simple planes. So we're going to get rid of our backdrop. And we're just going to add a plane. And what we're going to do is rather than, you know, bring our plane down, we're just going to scroll up and grab our whiskey glass and plop it on our plane. There we go. This place tool is the best thing ever. Uh, grab our plane. Okay. So we've got our plane now and we're going to hold control and click and hold shift and click and drag on this axis. And that's going to allow us to rotate it 90 degrees. So now we have, you know, a new backdrop just like that. Cool. So now you can start talking about what kind of lighting and mood and stuff like that you want for the scene. I think a dark mood would be pretty nice with this to kind of uh, make the classics and stuff glow a little bit sharper. So let's go ahead and just go into the asset browser and let's look at some materials, redshift materials and dry asphalt looks cool. And these car paints are fun. And we're really just looking for something that just kind of is, doesn't really stand out as anything particularly fancy, but just might look nice like stone or something would be nice. So let's look and see what we can find. Leather is pretty cool. Glass, metals. And that might be cool to put it on metal, but might be too, too much going on. Metal powder coating. Let's try that. Throw this on the floor and see what that looks like real quick. I don't like that. It looks weird. Um, oh, plaster rough, maybe. Click. Oh, I don't have that. Plaster trowel. Throw that on the back wall. That's not bad. It's way too intense. 
So what we need to do with this is click this icon and click the tag here and just scale it down like, scale it up really, like tile it 10 and 10. Doesn't change it, cool. Open up the plaster, change the size here. So we have these like controls inside of here. So we need to open up, find this input, instead of 300, we're gonna use like five. And that's gonna make that really small maybe 50 and see what that looks like but i think yeah 50 is pretty cool a little too much still i think i think we do like 15. yeah and then we're going to go down here and i know this looks crazy right and if you ever get lost and it's just stuff's all over the place hit shift l organizes everything for you okay and then if you're really lost you have this little window down here where you can click and drag or you can hit um h and that's going to frame everything up for you. All right, so one thing I wanna do is I wanna go in here to the displacement that's not even on because we don't have that turned on. The normal bump map, which is here, this bump node, and change it from 1.5 to one, because I think it's too much. Okay, so that's out of the way, I like that. Now let's keep looking down for something that we could put on the ground, plastic rough. I want stone or something. Slate, raw slate, that sounds cool. Throw that on our object. We're just gonna click and drag that over top of plane one. Boom, yeah, that's nice. Could probably do a pop of color back here, but we might end up just not even lighting that back there, but we'll see. Uh, this looks like it needs to be scaled down as well. So this one has the size right here. So we're gonna go ahead and change that down to 15 as well. Kind of match the back. It should work out fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's kind of cool. We don't we don't want to dwell on that too long. You guys can do whatever you want, obviously, to make your own render pretty cool. Uh, but now we need to go ahead and grab our big old area light that we have, delete it. And let's look at dome lights real quick, because we can really choose the mood from a dome light. So we're going to type in HDRI. Let's see what we have available in the media tab. And we could do space. We could do, I think one of these interiors is probably going to be pretty cool. Like this indoor one has some good colors. And you're really just looking at color ranges more than anything else. This one might be fun. New HDRI. And go to our dome light object and just click and drag this into the texture tab. Boom. Wow. Beautiful. It's good though. We've got like a nice rim highlight on the glass and stuff. I think this is going to be totally fine. Okay, so now we need to actually light this. So let's go ahead and create an area light. And then again, click drag, target to null. Make sure our target is placed on our glass. We'll do it like right next to it. And grab our area light and middle mouse click to go up and out of the way. If you ever get lost here, again, H frames everything up in your shot. And H in each of these windows. So we have a huge light, which we don't need, but we're gonna go ahead and kind of light it from this way. Obviously this is blowing everything out like crazy. So we're gonna change it to like a five and maybe even we're gonna change it to 50 because we're gonna make it smaller too. So we're gonna go with disc because I think that's gonna look a lot cooler and maybe scale that down to like 50 by 50. And then we're gonna sh sharpen that up all the way. So super bright little spotlight light mm -hmm. like that and so what we can do now if you look at this we need to pull it down and we really want a sharp light kind of like a noir kind of style like that and we can now lower the intensity down pretty pretty good maybe even just two three i think three is going to be good i like that but I don't like this. So let's create another area light. Again, add target to null. Um, we're just going to go to our target tag and grab the original target and just slide it in there so it's connected to that one instead. And now we can grab this and pull this way up high because we want a big overhead rim light. And we're just going to kind of push it behind everything just a bit like so and obviously lower that down that down lower that down 
like that. And then tighten it up a bit. So we don't want to blow out. <laughs> So I'm just thinking here stylistically. Let's scale this down a bit. Should I move my plane back? Should I just let it fall off into space? No. I think it needs to be up here. I think this is good. I don't love the background, but I think we'll be all right. Probably make it more colorful. It's looking kind of ugly right now. We'll fix it. I think our glass has just a touch bit too much green in it. So make it a tiny bit lighter like that. And then we'll go to our whiskey and just make it a touch more red. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Sometimes you do things and you realize you don't like them. So now we're going to play around with our camera. And maybe we like it better to do kind of a, a view like this. Mm, I don't like that. I, I don't mind that. But I want my Cossacks to come this way now, I think. So let's grab this area light that we're using for our Cossacks and bring it over here. Yeah, I think that'll look cooler with it blasting on the on the wall back there. And we can stretch it out a bit to fill that up. There we go. So that looks really bad right now, but once we add caustics, it should look pretty good. This slate looks bad. I feel like we should just made our own textures. So everything looks bad. Uh, with this slate, let's go ahead and go to um, inside of it. And click the actual material here. Open this up and go down to coat and just turn on a thin coat layer like 0.5 and then make it a little rougher. And that's just going to add a little roughness sheen on top of all this, which I think is going to look like it's kind of like finished. So that'll look cool. Okay, so now we have all this stuff together. Obviously, our area light that's using, we're going to use to cast photons, needs to have photons enabled. So details, cast photons. Up them to maybe 2.5 and add 200, zero, zero. replace that one with a 200. So it's 20 million. And then we want to grab our all object, right click, redshift, object tag, override, cast photons. And just to make sure, we're going to right click this and say copy tag to children. So that way it puts it on. Um, our whiskey glass and that stuff and our ice cubes but actually we're going to take it off of our ice cubes so we're going to take it off the top and take it off our two ice cubes here which we should have named so just have it on the whiskey and the glass all right so now we're going to go into our render settings and then advanced tab redshift caustics and up our blur radius to one and we should be good to go uh, let's go ahead and save this as glass uh, and we'll go ahead and hit render on this and see what this looks like I'm not thrilled with it but I'm hoping once the caustics kick in it's going to look a lot better this this is not looking good I don't like it so what are we going to do we're going to fix it so how do we fix it well we're going to stop rendering and we're going to go ahead and grab our target light delete that and our big overhead area light delete that too I don't know what we were thinking or what I was thinking I say we so I feel less bad I blame you uh, no but basically I'm just trying too hard, right? And that happens sometimes. We're going to choose a spotlight. Go ahead to the object and attach that target to null. Plop that target down on our glass, right chair, and then grab our spotlight. And we're going to pull it off this way and pull it up so it's above the surface, obviously. And then we're going to go in here to the textures, type in gobo. And in our spotlight, have the object tag open and choose one of our lovely gobos. Either, let's grab one from I go by Zach that's free uh, or mine, but let's see, where am I? I go by, is that in here? Are those, I, maybe it's IGB. 
Yeah. Uh, this one. This looks good. I just grabbed a still from his animated packs. And we we'll go ahead and throw that onto our texture. And go ahead and add in two zeros here for the intensity of this light. I know these numbers are stupid. Uh, but well, yeah. Spotlights. What are you going to do? Now we're going to hit IPR and just see how much better this is going to look right off the bat. Oh my gosh, so much better. Delete those two zeros. Now we're now we're looking better. And it looks a lot better. I don't love the floor for one, and I don't love the wall, but I feel like the wall needs to pop a color. Pop a color. <laughs> pop a... I don't know why I'm laughing at that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and pull our light in and just kind of tweak this around to get more of a dramatic kind of look like that. Yes. Okay. We're getting there. So maybe we can come down here and take this two off and switch it to a one. There we go. Getting a little better. I'm liking this more. It's still a little intense. Remember when I added two zeros to it? What was I thinking? Uh, let's change this to a nine. So 90,000 with it being really, really close to our object, but this is gonna look much, much better. All right, so now we need to add uh, another light just because I kind of want to backlight on this. I think I just take this wall and I just kind of push it way out of the way. I just let it, I just let it fall off. Yeah, I think that's better. I could keep it back there a tiny bit, but that's looking pretty good. Maybe I go low. Not that low. Uh, go to our camera and let's change this to an 85 and zoom out a bit like that. So now we have a little more of an artsy angle of it. Here we go. When we talk about lenses and stuff and camera week, but uh, you want to normally stay around 50, 85, 100. Things that are real world uh, lenses. Okay, cool. Got our glass. We've got our whiskey. I think our glass is just like got the tiniest bit too much roughness on it. Is this our glass here? Is it the roughness inside? No, it's just the roughness on the outside. Maybe it's the IOR. 0 0.01. Point nine five for the weight of the transmission. And there we go. Little better. Mm, no, nah, I thought it looked better before. Yeah. Point oh five. Okay. I'm happy with that. That looks much nicer. Let's go ahead and create another light just for a backlight. Um, we could just see if rotating our dome light around fixes it. Let's go ahead and just rotate that around and see if we can get more of a rim from those reflections. But you see how the dome light just kind of fills in the glass reflections a little bit. It's just kind of nice to have that real world without it. Um, it should look fine, but it's just going to look a little more flat. You know, we just have the one reflection. So we definitely want that on to kind of fill in those reflections and make it look more real. Okay, cool. So let's grab an area light again. Uh, small, say five, we'll say 10 by 10. And we will go ahead and say add target and null. And put the target right here and grab that light and throw it back behind here and up by the way. Up a little more so it's a little more overhead i think that's going to give us that nice shadow or not nice rim we're just going to try to really get it to rim across the top of our whiskey like that but we don't want it to overshadow our caustics back here so i like that let's go ahead and take that down to like two here we go all right cool and we're going to go ahead and tell that one to cast caustics too. 
details, caustics, and then we're just going to do two zeros for that one. Save this. And then for our last final touch, we're going to grab our camera, go to optical, and then we're going to turn on bokeh and click this little click the focus button and focus right there by clicking on our glass. And obviously this is way too small because everything's so small. We need to change our aperture up a bunch because our depth of field is too shallow. Focus distance just isn't working. Hold on. There we go. So if you got to pay attention to your focus distance, sometimes the click to focus just doesn't want to work. Uh, so we'll click the focus on that. Now we can change this back to like eight. We should have a nice little depth of field. Might be too much still. Change it back to 12 and maybe make this 40 so it's more the right inside of our cup. Okay. Click the focus right there. Right here. Yeah, and maybe just 10. We just don't want it to be like super, super blurry back there. We do want some of fall off. I like this. Okay, let's do one more thing. We're going to go Redshift Objects, Redshift Environment. This has become a much bigger tutorial than I wanted it to, but I think it's, I think you guys would be okay with it. Uh, so we've added a Redshift Environment, and we're going to make this like 0.001. So we just have a little bit of haze in our scene a little bit. And then we're going to, I think that's good. I like that. So now we hit render and let that go with caustics. So here you can see like these little imperfections on the glass just look really nice. And our denoiser is probably going to denoise some of that out, which will probably be okay. We can see how that is just adding that little touch of realism. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like we're using a dirty glass or anything. It just looks like we're really using a real glass. It's just like micro chip damage to it. So pretty cool. We'll see how the caustics turn out here in a second. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, the caustics aren't going to turn out because we didn't turn them on because we deleted those lights. So spotlight, caustics on. Set this to 2.5 and set this to... 20 million backlights caustics are on for that one that's fine but we need to make sure they're on for this spotlight now we see how this turns out it's gonna make a big difference all right there we go so now we have these nice caustics shining back here and it's looking really good and realistic and our glass is popping it's looking really nice so we could just come in here and throw on some like LUTs that we normally do which is the filmic review obviously the filmic medium High grade, obviously you can play around with these. You could also just do this all in Photoshop and stuff or whatever you want, but we get some cool little, some cool LUTs in here. They just come with Redshift. I like that one. You can adjust it. Turn it down a bit. There we go. Turn on colors. Keep our contrast, make this full screen. Keep our contrast up, pull it down a bit. Brighten up the highs a teeny bit. Take down the lows a bit. Yep. Bloom. Might be nice to get those little sheens in there. Flare. Don't need streak. Ooh. I like streak. I like that. It's nice. Yeah. I think overall that looks pretty good. And then we go file. Save as. And we'll just save that out as a JPEG because we're just putting it on Instagram. Glass lesson final. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. There's a lot. I know there's a lot of modeling and stuff rather than just sliding. But hopefully you got to see some troubleshooting and some stuff. Uh, that was kind of fun. It's really fun to make this glass. It's very satisfying. So hopefully you enjoyed that. All right. Let's keep going.